Well, here we are again. There, there you were there. And there. <laughs> yep. I was just talking to Mama to and asked, and I was thinking about this vert chapter X19, and I was thinking hard about it, thinking hard, and I and I noticed that Mama Toes uh, got all serious looking. You got all serious looking like this. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well, because I was thinking real hard, so you started thinking, or looking at me going like this. <laughs> then I realized I had that look on my face, must be looking all serious. And then I remembered when you, when I was little and you'd watch TV like the Waltons or something. If somebody was crying on there, you'd be looking at the TV like this. <laughs> and then somebody see something happy and you'd go... And then they'd be all emotional and you'd be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And then the best part is that I remember when you, when you would cry, when you were watching the show, you'd cry and you'd go, you'd go like this. Because <laughs> you didn't want the tears to come out, so you'd go, ah. <laughs> and you'd look up in the air and the go, ah. <laughs> And then we laugh at you. Ha, ah, mama's crying. Ah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember that. So I'm going to read Acts 19 again because I want to see what's going on with Paul and the Ephesians here, one of the peoples that he visited. I'm going to go check something first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to see who that group is on the TV that's turned up way too loud because uh, that was in a commercial for... Oh, I don't know what the commercial was for. Let me see if I can... Please. Okay, Warm Republic or something like that. I guess that a little plug for them here for some reason. We're reading the Bible though. This is better. Let's see what happened with Paul and the Ephesians. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly, spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when di divers were hardened, means when many were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. So actually it shows that sometimes it's good well, to depart from those who are creating trouble. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. These are certain vagabond Jews, exorcists. They say, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Mm. See, they didn't know Jesus themselves. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, 
Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Who are ye? And the men in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they, f they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So there's where the Ephesians mentioned again. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. They counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. Aha, uh -huh. so that's where he'll go to Rome, and then he writes, later writes Romans. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto Timotheus, uh, ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. In the same time there arose no small stir about what that way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only is this our craft in danger, to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. <laughs> and when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath, and they cried out, saying, The great is Diana of, Eph of the Ephesians. <laughs> and the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and arrested, Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed in with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered it into the people, would have entered in under the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chiefs, the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. See, you now this is interesting. It makes me wonder if this was right. Paul was under the control of the Holy Spirit, knew... I believe quite most always what what he was up to and was led by the Holy Spirit. But then the chiefs, it says that the disciples suffered him not. And then it says, and then these other said, it says, and the certain of the chiefs of Asia, which were his friends, said unto him, desiring that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Sent him a text message, I guess. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image of which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet, and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess, Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies, let them impede one, and plead one another. But if he inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly, for we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. That's a very interesting thing, and you have to wonder, why is it in the Bible, you know? Yeah. Why is that passage in the Bible? Well, it's interesting because then it goes on to the next matters at hand here, right after this. 
where they go about the business, and it says in verse chapter 20, And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called him uh, unto him the disciples, and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. Then it tells where he went next. Okay, so why is this part in the Bible? Interesting that those guys don't rise up and fight against those Ephesians, even though they were obviously in error with their with their worship of Diana. But the Christians didn't stand up and, and cause an uproar and a ruckus themselves. They relied on God. And they necessarily moved on. 